and you use the word yatra. It is not just travel or migration. Because we come with our own dreams, aspirations, we have our own uh, ups and downs. Whole life is nothing but series of happy even accidents. 80 years, almost 80 years ago I was born in India in a very prosperous family. In Gujarat, I belong to Bhadran village in Anand district. But in the old tradition, the first child is born in those days at your mother's maternal home. So I was born in Nariyad. I grew up, I went to primary school in about four or five different villages because my mother developed tuberculosis. So I went to primary school in Nariyad, Badran, Borsat for a few months, Karnadi and Chanod. So first seven years were more or less uh, formative in a way, but not in a particular village. Then Badra I stayed for five years at my high school, between 49 and 54, which was my most formative years. Then I went to Baroda University to do my, hoping to do my medicine. I could have done it. I was reasonably intelligent or clever. But then my father's fortune went down because Patel's lost uh, land in 1946 when the Tillers Act came into the independent India. Then my grandfather lost money because he was also running a business of money lenders. So there was a problem and uh, then we started, my parents and grandparents started bus transport business. It is coincidence. It was also nationalized in 1947-48, like state transport. So we became reasonably poorer, if I may say so. So I could not go do my medicine. And naturally, always I prepare a second line of defense or options. So I wanted to join Indian Army. I joined NCC. I was very fortunate. I became All India shooting champion. I passed some exams brilliantly. Uh, I became under officer. So I was invited to go to Bangalore in March 1959 for service selection board interview, which is for officer's grade. There were about 20 different tests, but I failed one psychological test. And then I was very much like crying like a baby. My commanding officer, General Limbo, a Gurkha, took me to see a film called Limelight that night. Because I was crying like a... and I was almost 22 years old. And he said that, look, when one door closes, many more opens. I failed because the question to ask me to was, why you want to join Indian Army? And I said, I want to die for my country. And that was my negative attitude. One doesn't need to die for a cause or a country. You should rejoice the journey, live and spread the benefit. That was the attitude. And I learned a lot. So then I went to back to Baroda. I worked in a pharma company for one and a half years as an analytic chemist with my B.S.C. degree. But then future was very bleak. And whenever our Shastra says, Chanakya says that whenever you are unable to find out suitable options, migrate. From one village to another village, one country to another country, look for new opportunities. Uh, dear God, if you believe in God or Mother Luck, there are so many options. So I went to East Africa. It was a wrong time. I went on 29th May 1960 with a lot of dreams. But it was a bad time. People were leaving East Africa to go back to India or other countries. So for five months I was unemployed. I could not get a suitable job. I got a job in the civil service, British civil service or East African custom civil service. But I was very lucky. I went to the British Council Library. My biggest advantage, I like to read newspapers and magazines and books. I think I, my habit started when I was five or six years old. It has done me the greatest good. So I used to go to British Council Library, spend two, three hours after my job. And the British Council has done a fantastic job, not only to spread the message for Britain, but helping many careers.
many people. So one day, one officer from British Council, Dar es Salaam, I don't remember, but his name was Mr. Davis, I believe. He took interest into me that why you come every day, read books and magazines and reference books and geography and history. So I told my story. He took it down. He took a psychological test. These Goras are very good. They always study carefully. Gora means white people. This British, a small country, ruled the whole world because they are intelligent. They do pre-planning. They do research. And they've got also compassion many, than many other countries. He took interest into me and he advised me to go for further studies, along with my full-time job. By that time, my father in India had taken sannyas. When I was 50, he took sannyas. And his bhakti and his uh, finance is helping me. So I had a lot of financial responsibility for my family in India, my family in Baroda, in Badran, and Dar es Salaam. And also to spend money, to send to money to my father regularly. But sannyas is a very noble stage of life. It is not commercial sannyas. The real sannyas, my father's guru was a Bengali in, near Bhuvaneshwar. He sent me a form in Dar es Salaam, quite no objection certificate, that I willingly agree with my father's sannyas, I'll take over the family responsibility, I'll pay 90 rupees per month by banker's order, no hanky banky business. But then my father also had to take pledge that he will train, be trained for a few years in that ashram, but then he will go completely unpublicized. He will move from one town to another town, learn herbal medicine, so he will become like a Vaidya, herbal doctor. He can spend Chatur Mas at a place, but no publicity whatsoever. The modern the sannyasis and gurus, God bless them, but they have a different type of sannyas. So, I was advised by Mr. Davis to go through a test whether to do law as external student or accountancy in 61. It was a very, very well organized process. So eventually he thought that I should do law. And I was in customs in Dar es Salaam. And I had to learn Latin language. In those days to get admission in LLB, London external student, you had to have some Latin knowledge. So I learned a bit of Latin through lingua phone. I also joined cultural classes. I worked very hard. In a way it was opportunity, not a struggle. And after about three, four years, <coughs> I thought now I can come to Dallas, London because I have British passport. On 9th December 1960, Tanzania, Tanganyika was the first country in East Africa and Central Africa to gain independence. Because there was a great man called Julius Nerere. He was a teacher, Mali Nerere. The campaign of independence in Tanganyika was different than Kenya and Uganda. In Tanganyika was a German territory, but in 1914-1918 war, Mainly because of Indian soldiers and South African officers, British won from Germans. It's a huge country, about 300,000 square miles, small population, and the tribes are very peaceful. It's a resource rich country, and Narare made sure that the freedom struggle in Tanzania was peaceful. So they were the first to gain independence. I must say that uh, Tanu, Tanganyika, African Western Union, did talk about racial harmony. Of course, they were anti-colonial, anti-imperialist, but that is part of life. Uh, but there was one man I must mention. There were many people from Indian community who were living in... Dar es Salaam had about 100,000 possibly Indians, but very few with the expectation, aspiration of the black people. Whites, Asians and blacks. That was the unwritten segregation. I joined Tanu as soon as I went to Tanzania because in my college days for one and a half year, I was Hamdard, sympathizer of Communist Party of India also. People go from, today I am capitalist also, I must admit. 
But Tanu had only two people actively involved from Asian community. One was Jaspai Patel, who was a, people used to call him crazy. Indians did not like him because he was talking about independence of Tanganyika, where eventually Indians will have to go back. But there was a great man called Randir Thakur. Randir Thakur was a Brahmin. He started people called Guru Mo, N G U R U M O, means brother, friend, in Swahili. And Indians, by and large, hated him because they were talking about equality and anti-colonialism and all these things. But I became a supporter. Remember in 1960, when South Africa was suffering from apartheid, to, and Central Africa was, uh, or as uh, Rhodesia Federation was very racist. Indians in Tanganyika, there was man. This is by just by Patel and as per Ranjit Ranjit Thakur. Ranjit Thakur was my role model. I started helping him in the weekends, afternoons, totally free of charge. He was financially sacrificing a lot. Health-wise, he had a very poor health, and he was also in the beginning bit concerned that I'm looking for a part-time job, where I had a government job, a reasonably well-paid job. I said, no, I'm just because I believe in your cause. And uh, he took a pledge from me. It's a very funny, the Brahmin. He said, one day he ordered some Coca-Cola and bajiyas. That is the best party. Yeah. And he said, he put some Coca-Cola in my arm. He said, take a pledge, like Pani Muko, that you will not go into publishing business till you are very prosperous. Because he had piled up a big debt. It was an idealism which... Uh, Affected his health and he died very, completely very young. But his good deed was respected by President Nehru. President Nehru was president, and at the crematorium, Nehru walked barefoot as a respect to Ranjit Thakur. But that is helped later. But I wrote a note in my diary on 20th December 1960 that if I get chance, I would like to start a publication. Because I realized the value of information and many more things. But then the struggle of life was different. For five years, I could not do anything. Even 15 years, I could not do anything because I had to come here. I worked here in part-time jobs and I became civil servant here. I went for my studies. I passed one or two small exams. But by the time I realized that Goddess Lakshmi was more important than Goddess Saraswati. And I got chance, like you are Rajan is in insurance. I met by chance an Englishman. And he was developing, it's an American company, he was trying to develop the British Asian market. And he approached me, he persuaded me, but even he forced me. And I'm grateful to him. Uh, in July, between July and September 67, for 10 weeks, in my holidays of university, I sold part time mutual funds, life insurance, health insurance, accident policies, and you'll be happy to know that I've been. When my civil service job was seven pounds a week, in those 10 weeks I was earning 220 pounds per week. I was working like a machine. Finish my job and go and, and I had, it was a good company, good product, and I was also lucky. People trusted me and not one of them lost money. So with that type of money coming, what will happen to a Gujarati fellow? Within a few months, I resigned my job from civil service. Within a few more months, I gave up my final exam of LLB Bharatlo. And I focus on money making. So I started earning about eight, nine, ten thousand pounds a year. And remember in 67, 68, that was a lot of money. Again, you talk about Gujarati characteristics, Indian characteristics, frugality, forward planning. So I kept on buying properties and shops. By 73, I became, with my family, we had 11 shops and 9 properties. So I thought I was very rich. It was comparatively very rich compared to what I had started. 
I don't blame him. But he was very religious. He did Lagurudra every month. Marudra in 1937 to celebrate my birthday. And Atirudra in 1945. And most of this wealth he squandered. Besides all this uh, government initiated problems. So I realized what is the importance of money making. Money is not everything. But nothing happened without money. Legal money, official money, hard work money, tax paid money. So I have uh, believed in making money with social responsibility. And that has stood by me. I genuinely believe that people must create wealth. The question is how do they create wealth? And more important, how they use their wealth. Publishing career happened a bit late. But in 75, got a chance, 75 June, a delegation came from my village. They were running college and they wanted money. By the time I happened, came to know with Kanjam by and others also, I had a good money. So I gave a few thousand pounds to that college, which was a lot of money. So I realized that uh, there is something I can do with the money. But then in November 73, I went to India. This is a personal incident. It may not be of importance to you. My son was three and a half. And he was born when I was about 33 or so, which is old for Indian families. And we had his, uh, I'm a Shivite. I go to temple, I pray. I wish I'm as following my faith 100% as others, but no, I'm still believe in that power. So we had his bada, his ritual in my village. So we took him to India, he was three and a half. We went as a family to India. I never met my father for 19 years. No, 13 years. He took Sarah in 1960. Between 1960 and 1973, I must have gone to India about four times. He even tried to find, look at my father. But he was sannyasi roaming all over India. I failed. But by chance, we came to know while I was in Baroda, Varodra, that he's doing Chatur Mas in Karnari. So we as a group, myself, my uncle, my family, about 17 of us went to them after verifying that he is the same because Hadus look alike. He was very angry that we are disturbing his sannyas. He never met any of us. But then he saw my son and grandparents love their grandchildren. He became more mollified more sensible. We went out, it's a beautiful place called Karnali on River Narmada. And he asked me a question, what are you doing in Gujarati? So I said, look, I've got so many shops and so many properties and I'm... So he was very angry. Mm -hmm. You're trying to just impress me with your wealth creation because you give so many to the family and to me. I said, no. But then he said, look, don't come and see me. Uh, because he was at that time in a very different mood. Sanyasis have their own independence. They are much different than normal people. But then along the discussion he said, you do something worthwhile. Akshar Jnan, some literary work. Spread faith, but go against Andhashaddha, against all the false things. So it struck me. He gave me some advice that there were some. He was actually not educated, but a very well read people, person. Even as a sannyasi, he would read regularly some magazine like Akhandanand or some other publication. So he gave me some examples. I came back. I was basically a shopkeeper. My whole life was counting cash, etc., etc. But my father also put me on the ground because I told him about my so-called philanthropy, that I gave so much money to college and so much money to organizations. I used to support regularly Sare Gujarati, some brotherhood or something, or some society or something, Manubi Patel. He said, look, you are just, you are fiddling the tax. You chori karo chon, dan karo chon. He said, look, are you paying your tax properly? I said, yes and no. He said, it's not paying properly. So he told me to do something worthwhile. So I came back with a lot of confusion. On one end, my whole psyche was money making, looking at the shops, running shops, 
רוצה למשוך. But remember my background was that communism also, socialism also. I was also active with the anti-apartheid committee here also. So I was, looking, I was confused what to do. So I went to, in Camberley, in Surrey, next to Sanders Military Academy, there is a beautiful theosophical lodge. And I read about them in some vegetarian magazine. I'm vegetarian, no meat, no fish. So I read something that in seven pounds you can stay for the weekend and do your retreat. It's all started by Annie Besant and other people from almost 100 years ago. And it was a different type of place. You are supposed to want to drink there, no meat or fish, smoke only in the open garden, reading, no television, but mainly chintan, meditation, thinking. So I spent three days. I went through very, very systematically that at the age of 35, 36, if I got so many shops, because my father asked me that you got so many shops and properties, even if you got 200 shops and properties, will you stop there? On the contrary, it's a mental problem. If you want to make more and more money, then you will cut the corners. The only thing is making money. He had hit me hard. So I thought that this guy has a Master, means my father, a sannyasi. So I told some friend that he wanted me to do something in literary work and I'm a shopkeeper, grocer. But then eventually, in Barasalam, I made note in my diary, on 20th of December 1960, I was inspired by Randy Thakur. So I thought I should do something. I was thinking about starting a leaflet or magazine or pamphlet. But by that good time, Gujarat Samachar was running and they had some financial difficulty and also it started by five people, I must tell you. Gujarat Samachar was started by five people, two Punjabis and three Gujaratis in May 1972. And you can't run a business with five people with, without financial strength. Leadership is very important. So they were into difficulties. Within two years, they were actually facing money litigations, mainly inspired by their competition. So they approached me and were fools, were angels, trade carefully, fools jumped. So I took it over without any knowledge of publishing, printing or journalism. But there was deep desire to do something different than what I was doing. That is where Tanaka came into picture. Always go to the different pasture. Don't stay in the same confinement. I made mistakes. Between uh, January 76, when I started my operation in London, for Gujarat Samacha, under my management, for two and a half years, I was losing 5,000 pounds a month. But one thing, I'm a Patel, if I may say so. We don't give up. We are farmers. We trust, we work hard, and we leave results to the supreme power, like Gita's Karma Nivadi Karasta. So I worked hard, I sold my some of my shops and properties. I was well, one thing I was clear, don't pile up debt, because Randi Thakur taught me, Kusum Ben Shah taught me. And uh, many people helped me. Whatever today we are, we are a very big business. If I may say this about my public, we have got two weekly papers and eight other magazines, and we have got no debt whatsoever. The only debt on me is the subscription of my subscribers. And we have made sure that if, suppose if I die while talking to you, we have kept that much money in a bank deposit account. Otherwise, uh, what we call in Hindu scriptures, Kubir Bhandari is my treasurer. I don't have any financial strength. That's why I can behave in a very independent way. Even before I went into publishing, I realized that a print media or any media is not just giving news. You have to serve community. So I use in my own office work, Seva Yagna, before that Nyan Yagna. Seva means we do about 22 different things outside office. So many health projects and many more things all over the country. But campaigning because I realize 
the normal common citizen especially indians afro caribbeans are much more politicized active our muslim friends they are also very active we indians we hindus we gujaratis are much more docile if i may say so we believe others will do our problem solving i'm not talking about right and wrong but that to be was analysis so when neil kinnock said that thing in 82 before that i had campaign for quite a few things this community my readership my supporters my sponsors my advertisers have enabled me without their support i won't be able to do anything but partly i also make sure that to do everything to retain that trust and confidence between publisher editor and the reader and the community lot there's an amazing relationship you can't cheat everybody all the time so i got my skeleton in the cupboard i don't hide them or my limitations uh, i believe that you become transparent people will trust you more united kingdom if you look at the world map or the globe it's a very small country the island nation one and half island it has some bad parts about colonialism ireland was the first colony etc etc but britain is the only place in the world where they were the first against they passed the first law against slavery christianity spread but by service not by sword alone of course there was the metro cities by portuguese in goa and other countries but christianity spread because of service Britain, especially, out of uh, today's 190 or members of United Nations, out of 780 belong to the British Imperial era, and there were British exploiters, imperialists, but there were many nice people. Say in India, who discover our scriptures, our Sanskrit books, translation. who got limelight for rabindranath tagore so there were intellectuals clergy colonial people so the british as such not i'm talking about english but british as such they are essentially noble people so in this country today compared to many countries you can come here even if you are not a citizen if you are resident here you can vote you can stand for election and whether you elected or not there's a rule and law rule of law if you got problem with the authorities by and large there's a good positive treatment you are allowed to worship your own religion even i would tell something more sensible they know that some extremists violent oriented faith tradition followers they do so much damage bloodshed in the country but they respect them they get all the protection of the legal system and i consider that there is no country in the world today which is better as a society whole society than britain that's why i call it ram rajya ram rajya means a common man is by and large respected we get social security benefits or health they don't call it charity the demand on demand you get hospital treatment without any payment and which country can provide that education so many of the young indians gujaratis other ethics go to cambridge and oxford so all these reasons and many more it makes me feel that i'm i'm glad i'm british than any other nationality we all live everybody lives a legacy in different forms the future of print media we discuss all the time with my people here we got a good number of people here we got in office in india i was there last week i 
have a vested interest in the viability and credibility of my publishing business, Asian Business Publishing Limited, or Gujarat Samadhan Voice. Not forty years, but almost seventy-four years. I've devoted to print media as a reader and as a provider. There are challenges for print media. When uh, radio came as a broadcasting thing, people thought that was the end of print media. Then came television, and today we got social media. Still, newspapers and the magazines and the books have their more permanent legacy. I believe that if you produce a well-balanced dish of news and features and inspirations and something else besides many points, then your future is secure. As a publisher of a Gujarati paper, I accept very positively the change in demography and the change in need of mother tongue or language. Jewish people, their mother tongue was Hebrew or Yiddish, and in this country there are about three hundred thousand Jewish people. The fantastic. System of cultural transmission and many more. How many of them speak Yiddish or Jewish or Hebrew? I'm not much worried because though we have promoted language teaching for Gujarati and in our way of our future is involved there, I can't be blind. Why my grandchildren or your children? Learning English, speaking English, thinking English, common sense. But if you learn Gujarati or Punjabi or Marathi or whatever we are mother tongue, it's an extra advantage. I am able to speak three, four, five languages and understand few more. And I believe in that scientific research that if you got more linguistic knowledge, it is good for your brain power. It is one way. To put away the onslaught of dementia, but language. Look, every week, some language in the world die. But it's a fact of life. But to go back on my own calculation, we have done some um, business plan. So in this country there are about eight hundred thousand Gujaratis. That is what I believe to be true. There is permanent residence. The students and visitors are different. Out of them, fifty-five percent are born in this country. So don't expect them to be Gujarati scholars. Though they go to there are about four hundred, five hundred weekend schools that teach Gujarati. People can speak but can't read and can't write. So what? As long as they know what is Gujarati nuances, culture, traditions, values, or Indian, for Gujarati is just part of India. Remember, only five percent of India is Gujarat. So I'm not worried about Gujarati. I'm talking about all Indian language which came from Indo-European tradition, which is mainly Sanskrit. To put it in a different context. As long as my reader, that's why we got Asian Voice paper, which is becoming more successful. It was typical Gujarati attitude. We had Gujarati much are viable, so we started Asian Voice about many years ago, and it is viable. It is uh, open for everybody. I know that there are readers who are not even Indians. So, future of print media will depend upon the quality of the reading material. And other services they provide. One thing I believe, and we I think about it all the time. If such a so so many decades work is today's A B P R publications, 
I don't want you to die when I pass away. I hope to live another long life, but then again, who knows? One thing, it's a flaw of nature. If you are, it's a struggle for existence and survival of the fittest. It's a very difficult question to answer. Maybe genes, maybe my family, people who work with me, I don't call them my employees. More important is the people I meet. Every week, on average, I attend some seven, eight or ten events. Why? Not because I want subscription. I want to meet them. Murari Bapu once told me many years ago, that if CB people invite you, please go there. They invite you not only for publicity. You can give them some spark. I always make some lighter comments also. Sense of humor is very important. I do it as an investment. I owe so much to so many people for whatever success I've got that in a small way I want to at least pay the dividend, not the capital repayment. Now that keeps me very young. Also, I'm a Hindu. I'm a Shivite. When I was born, I made a covenant with my mother and God that I want to live long, healthy life and keep on doing worthwhile things. Sometimes I do stupid things also, but that is part of life. I'm vegetarian. I don't eat to live. I eat just to survive, not live. Eating is all my main hobby, but I'm totally, I'm a very sugar and alcohol. I smoke about four or five cigarettes per day, but I don't inhale. I walk regularly. I meditate. I do my mantras. I do my yogas. And I will do it for next 31 years, if I may be lucky enough. 311. We Hindus are everybody's baby, nobody's baby. Because we have got so much choice of gods and goddesses and gurus and all these things. Which is good, which is very democratic. It gives a choice, you pick up what you want. But unfortunately, there is no concerted effort. I was talking to Chief Minister of Gujarat only about two weeks ago. I am concerned about the diaspora. Not only connectivity with this country and motherland India, but I'm concerned about our own cultural inputs and the quality of life. Earlier I talked about very few people in the prisons or more in education. But compared to other communities, Gujaratis and Indians and Hindus and Sikhs and Tamils are above average in education, professions, entrepreneurship, arts and culture, philanthropy, and there are minimum in prison. I talked about shame and gratitude and other values. It is our job, those who are well endowed with wealth and power. So I'm doing it in a very subtle way. In this week's Asian Voice, or last Saturday's Asian Voice, just this, there's a big article about Lal Bhai family. Kasturu Vilalbhai, whole article, whole page. I planned that article. Kasturu Vilalbhai family, they are in Gujarat for about six, seven generations. They came from Rajasthan, they are giants. If you know Ahmedabad and Gujarat, when Ahmedabad had so many textile mills, it was Kasturu Vilalbhai family talked about Ahmedabad Textile Industry Research Association, Atira. They were the one with other Jain families called Sarabhai family and others rich people of Mdabad to give hundreds of acres of land which is now Gujarat University. They were the people who started IMI Ahmedabad. They were the people who helped ISRO. I think people who are endowed with wealth or power or resources have to reinvest some part of it, the time, energy and financial resources in sustaining what is good in the society. So I'm glad you talked about it. It will happen. 
So in the article, there are two people mentioned from Nanji Kalidas Mehta and Meghdi Pesarat Sar. Read the article. I put that name myself. They were businessmen, not so well educated. One was Luhana, one was Jain Baniya. They went to Africa when they were 14 or 16. Not only they helped their businesses or India, they also helped African people, scholarships and health centers and schools. I believe that our prosperous community here has to learn from the Jewish people. You go to London, most of the museums and exhibition halls and cultural places are mainly endowed, proportionately a lot more by Jewish people than the Anglo Christians. Jews are only 300,000. But there's a competition of philanthropy. If Charles Clore gives so much money, another Jew will give more money. I want Indians to remember that if this country gave you wealth, at least keep part of it back. Asian voice and Gujarat Samajas should remember if society gave us something, it will give us back. So it's an ongoing campaign. I'll end up this way. Our first 40 50 year settlement in this country was foundation laying. We came from many countries, not only East Africa, Fiji and Suriname, and God knows how. Our priority was job, housing, family, education, pension. But then earlier Rajan talked about why it took 30, 40 people to Gujarat to do some work. And there are so many people. Why so many people climb Kilimanjaro or bicycle in Africa to create schools in Africa? There are people who are working. I got some project here in 1984. We had a bicycle man, Englishman, John Powell. We encouraged him to go to India. He bicycle between Delhi and Mumbai to collect for blind people. We sponsored Gujarat, but we put a condition that you have to go to my village, Bhadran, and get a photograph in front of my temple. This is partly to inspire my people in the village. Or when Mancap and approached me in 83, I think Lord Riggs was the name, mental problems are very severe. People hide. And he came and told me that, look, if you want to raise money, but more than that profile. We are lucky. We were able to get a man called Arvind Pandya, who came from Baroda. We sponsored him. With help of people like Mukund Patel, Hansarat Patel and many others. But we paid the money. He ran backwards from John O'Groats to land them. We organized 70 meetings at town halls and I went there. And I wouldn't mind to say publicly, mainly in the areas of Indian and especially Muslim residents, in Lancashire, in Yorkshire, in Cheltenham. Why? How we did Not because of alone, but people supported us. So I think there is so much thing going on. My job in the publishing media is to bring out. And we bring out. Don't be disheartened. Along with other pressures of life, deep down, if you think there is so much within you, you can give back to society. I'm just lucky, fortunate, thanks to my family and my people and my readers. Without them, where can I be? If they don't pay subscription, if they don't pay advertisement. So I give something, but they give me in Mount Paul. In Gujarat, this is a nice word. Mali <laughs> 